Hey everyone, Eric Watson here, freelance writer, player of games, writer of words, recorder of videos, and tabletop role-playing aficionado. Welcome to another DM's Guild review, my written and video review series where we take a look at the adventures and supplemental material at the Dungeon Masters Guild website. This video will be reviewing the player class supplement, the Scion class, designed by Stratos Fotakis for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. A review copy has been provided for the purposes of this review. If you enjoy my videos, consider using my affiliate links for your DM's Guild shopping, supporting me via patreon.com slash roguewatson. Shouts to my platinum patrons, Joe, Will, Tiny Dancer, Manuel, Basil, Tom, Huskarl124, and Wizard Princess. And gold patrons, RPG Papercrafts, Charming Grenade, Pretty Boy Nima, Marcos, Dave, Vicente, Gilberto, Sean, AK, Cert, 2 b Adam, Dithers, Lounge, Sam, Arash, Limpy Spuds, Jerome, Fatboy619, Sklenia, and Nick. Thank you all very much for your support. Those of you that have been uh, following my reviews for at least a couple of months now might remember that I reviewed a, another uh, Psionic class player supplement earlier in the summer. Uh, came away with mixed feelings, ultimately felt that the Scion class was too much of a wizard-warlock-monk hybrid, didn't really feel like it was its own thing. And unfortunately, this one kind of suffers from the same problem. Once again, it takes the Scion class, which I think, I think there's still room for a Scion class, but I think it needs to be kind of rebuilt from the ground up, and we need to get away from the spell slot angle because at this point when you're making a, a scion a scion assist scion whatever you want to call it uh especially with this guide you're, you're basically just taking a wizard you're replacing those spells with slightly rethemed scion spells but you know they're a full caster they've got you know, a full list of Scion spells. It's it's the same mechanics, it's the same system. Yes, some of the abilities are different, but even then, so many of the things that you can do as a Scion are already in, you know, you, you can make that happen. You take a, a Warlock with the Great Old One, and you've already got, like, the Telepathy, and then just take those certain kind of spells, and you've basically already got a, you know, thematic you just have to reskin them as, you know, instead of a patron, it's just you've got mind powers. That's that's not that hard to do. So the problem is anything that's a whole separate class needs to feel like there's a reason that this class exists that's got its own specific unique mechanics that make it special. And I don't feel like this one does that, even though there's a devilishly handsome half-naked man on the cover. Um, distracting. <laughs> there's two things that this supplement does that I like. Uh, one of them is uh, every single one of its subclasses, which there are five provided, which is pretty cool, get a psionic form, which is a s functionally similar to a warlock invocation. Basically, uh, you can choose a certain amount of them as you level up. You start off with one, eventually two and three. Uh, you select, you once you've, I don't know what you call it, equip it or, or have it selected, you can turn it on, you can activate it with a bonus action, and they give you some kind of uh, buff or extra ability. It's it's usually, you know, maybe an advantage on a certain check, or maybe you can move another 10 feet, or, you know, so it's not huge game, hugely game-breaking, but it's interesting that they're all uh, divided up into the various subclasses, so they really want you to specialize, uh, and they're only available for those. But, on the flip side, uh, you know, the Warlock Invocations, a lot of them have the prerequisites for leveling. So, for example, here are the level 1 Invocations, and then these are the ones that require level 5, these ones require level 9, etc. And that allows you to use, you know, more powerful spells and abilities. Although, granted, a lot of the Invocations are kind of garbage, and you can watch all kinds of videos and things on different balancing for the Warlock Invocations. But here, there are no level requirements whatsoever. All of them can be taken at level 1 and they can be swapped out willy-nilly, which means none of them are particularly crazy cool, basically. That's kind of the flip side of the problem. They're all just minor benefits. Some of them are, are neat. You know, you get, you know, like, like a plus one bonus to AC. That's cool, but it just never gets more interesting than that. Or, you know, a plus two to uh, cold damage. Or, um, you know, well, the Shaper's got all of it, their stuff for the uh, Astral Construct. We'll get into that in a second. But it's just... You know, it's a neat idea with the Psionic Forms, and that helps. That does help make it different. Although, on the flip side, it, it is basically taking the Warlock Invocation thing, which I think is a good thing. But without the level prerequisites, they never really get much interesting as you level up, uh, just beyond the few that you can take. Also, some of them only have, like, four or five choices, whereas, like, the Telepath has almost a dozen. So they are certainly not all created equal. So all of the Scions um, have uh, Telepathy, 
They can add like their uh, intelligence modifier to psychic cantrips. You know, there's some things that all of them can do, but at first level, you need to pick your uh, subclass, your order. And there are five provided here. There's the Nomad, the Shaper, uh, the Seer, Solopsism, and the Telepath. Out of all of them, the only one that's really kind of interesting and different is the Shaper. So the Nomad has some kind of teleporting abilities. That's decent, I suppose. Um, the uh, Solopsism is the basically the warrior psychic. You can uh, you get the uh, extra attack. You can add uh, temporary hit points. Uh, you gain uh, resistance against psychic damage. You're just more of a you know martial fighter of the psychic. Um, the seer is just more wizard, and they even mention <laughs> the problem is the class itself is even self-aware of the fact that it's basically just a, a rethemed wizard. Like for example, the seer just says you know for Cynox magic transparency, psychokinesis powers are equivalent to powers of the evocation school, and then uh, solipsism is transmutation, uh, and telepath is enchantment. So it even says like yeah we're basically just taking this school of wizardry and kind of retheming it into what would be a psionic and i don't think that's i don't think that's good enough for a separate class i mean just take a warlock or take a wizard and create a psionic uh subclass maybe and then they can get unique abilities from there or you need to really rebuild this character uh this class concept from the ground up i mean for example pillars of eternity has a uh has a psychic class called the cypher i believe and in that game uh which is uh, very much inspired by the D&D rule set, you have to attack in order to generate the resource that you use, I forget what it's called, uh, and then you spend that resource to actually cast spells. So your attacks generate the power you need uh, in order to do all of your abilities, and that feels a lot different than a wizard who enters battle with the very traditional spell slots, and, and obviously the uh, psionicist has their Cypher has their own, you know, unique abilities um, that usually involve, you know, stunning and charming and dominating that the wizard might not necessarily have. So that's an example where it's the the, the mind, you know, based character isn't just casting different kinds of spells. They don't really cast. I mean, they're using abilities that seem like spells, but at least they're generating a different way of getting to that. So. That's kind of what I want to see from a Scion in the future, and unfortunately this one just does too much of what the other one did, which was called, I think it was just called Psionics, which is just taking a, a spellcaster and just making it rethemed to these kind of mental abilities. And in this case, this one also suffers from what I think was a lot of people's problems with the Scion class, which is that they can do everything. It's too powerful of a class. And it really steps on the toes of a wizard, because a wizard's whole thing is that uh, they have a huge variety of spells that they can learn and acquire and have a spell for every situation. Not necessarily combat related either. A lot of like, you know, useful utility spells of getting around and opening doors and just all that kind of stuff. Reading arcane runes. It's, they've got a spell for everything. So does the Scion. And literally the Scion in this uh, supplement, which, I mean, it's impressive that we get literally rebuilt spells... Uh, where's the list? Right here. I mean, there's nearly 200 spells that are, on the one hand, technically completely new. It's a whole new spell list from 0 to ninth level, which is really impressive. But if you look at them, you know, they're basically a lot of the same spells. And that's because there's already pretty much all of these spells in the, you know, player's handbook. I mean, they've already got, there's already command there's already, you know, spells of domination and, and telekinesis and levitate. Like, all all of the, sp the abilities that you would normally associate it with somebody that's got telekinesis or telepathy and all of those abilities, they're already spells in D&D 5e. So that's why there's a tendency to just create a psionicist by re-theming a wizard and just saying, like, well, okay, you're just going to use these kind of spells. But in this case, it doesn't even do that. It just says, well, we're going to re-theme every single spell that a wizard basically has you know shooting lightning bolts raining down freezing rain i don't know why somebody who has mental powers can just do all that unless you're assuming that somebody who has mental powers is the same as somebody who can cast spells based on years of arcane research which i guess is what this is saying it's like yeah that's basically just a wizard but why not just make a wizard warlock so it just doesn't separate itself enough but i want to stress that i think i mean having all of these spells is cool 
Um, there's a lot here. I mean, just at first level alone, you can read emotional moods, teleport, turn invisible, light foes on fire with the power of your brain, transform weapons into psionic energy. Those are just first level spells. There's a lot here, which is cool. Most of them aren't unique <laughs> compared to if you actually read the entire player's handbook spell list from front to back, and then you read this one, you could probably come up with like, you know, 75% of them that were reasonable facsimiles. Uh, it's just, it's basically doing the work for you if you wanted to retheme your main spellcaster into, well, instead of reading a spell book, I'm using the power of my mind. Now, that's not a bad thing. You want to do that? That's totally fine. And I think that's a legitimate way to build a character and probably an effective way to build a character because the balance level is already there. You know, you, it's, there's, a wizard already exists or a sorcerer, actually a sorcerer would probably be better because a sorcerer doesn't even have to read a book. Sorcerer's just got that innate talent. That's That translates pretty damn well to being a mind-powered spellcaster. But I would really love it if we could have a Scion that was actually using different mechanics, unique mechanics, rather than just a spellcaster. Now, the one example of something that's a little bit different that I appreciated was the Shaper Order. This one basically turns the Scion into a pet class. You can summon an Astral Construct right at level 1. And interestingly enough, its hit points scales to your level as well as your Con and Int modifiers. It can't do anything but take the dodge action, but you can take a bonus action to then do basically regular attacks or dash, disengage, whatever you want. And then as you level up, you gain augmentations that you can employ for your uh, Astral Construct and just letting it attack twice, for example, or dealing more damage or um, giving uh, temporary hit points. or you know, Basically, every single ability you have focuses around this astral, including all of those uh, psionic forms you had. All of those things also augment. And I just, I love class abilities where it front loads the cool feature, so you get that early, and then as you level up, that unique feature just becomes more powerful and allows you to choose from different abilities to further specialize the way that you want to play and you envision your character. That's always something that I'm a huge fan of whenever I see that in classes or spell or, or subclasses or whatever else. And I think that was an excellent job of doing that. It, it feels fun. You get that ability right off. I love that you can you get that arcane construct right off the bat. It doesn't, you know, say that you have to level up to get it right at first level. But then you can, you know, employ all these fun augments and uh, extra abilities, which is really cool. And it's different. Like, it's bizarre. And you can make your astral construct look like whatever you want because it's just a creature of literally your mind has been creating i mean it, it's a neat idea and it makes it more unique compared to every other one it's just a bummer that all the others are not nearly as interesting i mean i would understand if we did the one like fighter-esque one the solipsism um because that feels like you're just checking a box like well if you want to be a you know psionic caster but still be more you know melee focused or have those kind of abilities then this is the one for you kind of like similar to a bard you know bard college of valor has got that exact same thing where it's like here's the bard that wants to be more of a, a frontline fighter um that'd be better if then all the other ones were a little bit more interesting than just order the seer you gain some wizard spells and do more damage with spells that's not or telepath you're better at the telepathy feature even though it's not still that much different than just having a warlock with great old one and some of the mind spells and abilities it just doesn't quite differentiate itself enough so unfortunately and it's not it's not badly constructed i mean it's very you know it, it's professionally designed um there's not a whole lot of art but the art that is here is is really cool and striking you know it's well written all of that is there it's just i think it's a huge misstep to create an entire scion class and just make it a pure spell caster that uses the whole spell casting spell slot system you know what screw spell slots completely fourth edition had the right idea let's do cooldowns let's do charges let's do per encounters sorry i blacked out for a second anyway where was i <laughs> spell slots are not for uh scions i don't like to see it i don't i mean maybe there's a way of doing it but it just doesn't excite me for having this entire what should be a very unique feeling class and and maybe that's a problem a good problem to have that fifth edition already with all of the classes in the player's handbook basically covers all those bases so you can already make basically your own scion with all the abilities and features that you i mean i, I think literally to my character from storm king's thunder uh which was a multi-class 
Paladin Warlock who had a lot of those kind of Jedi mind trick abilities. Like I was able to create, recreate a lot of abilities that I could do through the Warlock and not even have to worry about this entire Scion class that functionally isn't that much different. So it's not a bad supplement, but uh, I, I would really want to see something that is more unique, more interesting, and more deserving of something that's an entirely new class rather than just taking a wizard warlock concept and just kind of rejiggering all the different spells. So, pros. The Shaper is a unique Scion subclass with an augmentable arcane construct. I really enjoyed that idea, and I think it brings something new to the table. Uh, unfortunately, that's only one of five subclasses. Uh, pro, each subclass has multiple psionic forms to swap for new abilities. I think that was a cool idea again, but a slight misstep. Um, I just wish they were more interesting. I, I like the concept of giving the Scion different forms that they can, I don't know what the word is, equip and then and then activate um, You know, through a bonus action. Eventually, they can activate like, mul they can ha have multiples equipped, and then eventually when they level up, you can activate multiple forms. And I think you could do that from a cool RP standpoint, you know, make it your character looks different or something cool. Um, that's a neat idea, but because they don't have any kind of level requirements or anything, um, none of them usually get more interesting than like, you've got advantage on this kind of check or plus one AC or something. And it's not something that you would like. There's no really reason to shuffle these around so much that I was hoping for. Um, but pro, a ridiculously huge list of over 190 new Scion spells. That is ridiculous even though that's going to appear in my cons also. <laughs> cons, most of the Scion subclass feels too much like a rethemed wizard warlock multi-class and lacks a strong class identity. Pretty much my overarching theme of this review, which is I don't think the Scion feels unique enough from already a, uh, a wizard. And the other con, which is specific to the spell list, is that the, these huge variety of spells that we have it makes the Scion into a do-it-all spellcaster, which I think really steps on the toes of the wizard. That should be the wizard's whole shtick, is that you can cast a huge variety of spells. And then here comes, uh, you know, Scion walking through the door, just like a jackass, able to do everything the wizard can. <laughs> and it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't sit well with me. Uh, and in fact, even when I think of a Scion assist, I think of somebody who ha can do a few things very very well and maybe their power level can fluctuate and which is why i think it should be based on you know hit die or something about their own you know constitution or something like that maybe it should be like rages where you can do a certain amount but they certainly can't do like all these different things like rain lightning from the sky and freezing rain and do all these you know transform their hands into different weapon like all of that stuff the fact that all scion even whatever your subclasses can just take whatever spells from here it's just too much of a there's too much variety and too much power. Final verdict, the Scion class is basically a rethemed wizard warlock that features five subclasses and nearly 200 new spells to create your desired specialized spellcaster or Scion. <laughs> Thank you to everyone for watching this video review. You can see my written review at roguewanson.com. You can support my work at patreon.com roguewanson. You can follow our own D&D adventures here on my YouTube channel. Thank you.